Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's segment of Expert Corner. Today, we have a wonderful guest joining us. We have Ryan Bonnet from Stoller Enterprises. Ryan, how are you? Doing well, Tracy. How are you? Good. I'm excited to have you on the show. And today, we're going to be chatting about solving niche problems and crops using plant hormones. Are you ready to go, Ryan? Let's rock and roll. Good. <laughs> Before we dive in to the main part of the segment, can you tell us more about yourself and what brought you to Stoller? Yeah, you betcha. So um, uh, Ryan Bonnet, I'm the National Commercial Director for Stoller Enterprises. Uh, how we're structured around the world is we have a head office in Houston, and then we have subsidiaries all the way around the world. So we operate in 24 to 26 different countries and about 13 different subsidiaries. So Almost anywhere that you've seen agriculture around the world, we've got a business unit that's operating there. Uh, a bit of my background, um, pretty diverse background in uh, in the agricultural industry. Cut my teeth working for Cargill as a retail manager and grain buyer. Moved on to uh, BASF for a period of time. Uh, worked for Global Ag Risk Solutions for a while. And then I had the uh, pleasure of joining Stoller Enterprises about uh, two and a half years ago. Excellent. And you guys have some exciting stuff on the go. And I'm really eager to dive in and get you to share with our audience about niche problems in crops and how we can solve those problems using plant hormones. So take it away. I know you have a lot of good stuff ready for us. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, I'll make back it up a little bit and just talk to you a little bit about why I joined Stoller, why I thought it was pretty uh, interesting because I saw these niche problems and these solutions and, uh, you know, thought I wanted to be a part of that. So, you know, where I go with this one is, is that, you know, within our ag economy, you, you talk about, you talk to growers and they're always looking for those last two or three bushels that last a little bit of optimization. And, you know, my background, you know, with a, a chemical manufacturer, even with a retailer, we, we keep running out of these new active ingredients that, uh, you know, handle some of these problems that we've known for a long time, you know, like, so think of like weed resistance or even fertility. It's always been just add more, you know, add more nitrogen down the, uh, down the chute to accomplish that or breed a bigger canola plant. Um, but there's some problems that you can't fix with, a, you know, with an eyed product like a herbicide, fungicide, insecticide, or just more genetics. And uh, Stoller's got a, a few applications and through our embedded plant hormone products, you can, you can attack some of those problems. So, you know, I, I saw this and I was, at, I was asking myself, if I know that about the, you know, the chemical manufacturing industry, where's our next bit of, you know, your last three, five bushel an acre jump yields going to come from and uh, saw these type of products and applications around the world. And I thought, Hey, you know, Canada needs that. And specifically some niche problems that, you know, we handled on our farm that dad's still frustrated uh, handling to this day. You know, Stoller had an application or a potential solution for that. Love it. Okay. I will get you to share some of those niche problems. You betcha. Um, so one that I, you know, thought that was kind of near and dear to our heart is uh, uh, how do you increase germination in an area of your crop or your, your land that's got salinity problems? And I'm not talking about that area that's like baked off white. But you know the edges of that, that area that are like keep bleeding out and bigger and bigger into your fields? How do you stop that type of thing in its tracks? And, uh, you know, we've got a product that essentially has plant hormones and a calcium product, in you know, in included in there. And when you use that as a seed treatment or seed dressing on your cereals or your pulses or even potentially your canola, it helps those those. Uh, uh, those roots uh, gain bigger structure. It helps them stay strong and then also stimulates them to get larger and again, germinate more seeds per square foot in that, uh, you know, in those areas. So again, uh, it's not fixing your issue of having saline soil, but it helps you combat it. It helps you hold it back if you're a grower, okay. you know, you know and, and we've got a few corners of our field back home that <laughs> just keep pastoring us. And instead of putting in the grass, is there a different way that we can handle that problem? Okay, perfect. Okay. And, um, you know, other ones that we see as well too is, um, I'd say a lot of times growers have only had the ability to just essentially put fungicide type seed treatments down on their on their plants, uh, in their seeds, I should say. And if, if you're the type of grower that may 
um, how do I say, counter the continual use of more and more, you know, petrochemicals in your soil or on your crops. And if you want to, like, say, relieve a little bit of that pressure, you know, is there a way to get your crop out of the ground, you know, without having to use those every single year? And again, we've got a, a you know product in our lineup called uh, Fortified Stimulate Yield Enhancer, essentially stimulate. You know, and if you use it as a seed treatment, it can help you do that. It essentially stimulates roots to get bigger, stronger, more, you know, uh, more vital and helps your, your crop germinate, get out of the ground faster. Very similar to what you would see using your, you know, fungicide-based products. And don't get me wrong, they work great for what they're doing, you know, but just more and more actives down in your soil may not be the best thing long-term for you. So this is just a different way of getting another crop. Maybe not use every, or get another ground. Maybe you don't use it every year, but you know, every two, three years on that soil, why not? You know, if you don't have this huge list of uh, disease problems that we scare the heck out of you with in your soil, um, you know, why not try something different? Nice. I like it. Okay. You know, another, you know, other niche areas that you have is like, say, early crop stress management. Um, and where I go with this one, you know, and, and hopefully growers can follow me down this is we got really good, you know, in our, you know, in our industry of using like eyed based products and killing things, you know, so we're really good at killing weeds, very good at managing uh, diseases with fungicides, really good at, you know, managing insects with insecticides. Okay. But how do you manage the cold? Or how do you manage the wet? How do you manage the heat? You know, how do you manage herbicide, you know, stress or damage on your crop? Um, we, again, have products that you can use to manage that stress. And all that stress is doing, so everybody follows me, all it's doing is hindering your optimal potential of your yield. So if you can stop that hin that hindrance, it provides you the opportunity to grow that biggest crop you possibly can. You know, so, you know, an example I always give people is if you don't like that yellow flash on your peas that you get after spraying them, what if we could minimize that or reduce that? Minimize or eliminate, I should say. Okay. Fantastic. And another one, I think uh, I chatted a little bit about it on, in some previous sessions that we had, but it seems to me that we keep getting hotter summers, or at least you get two or three weeks in the summer that seems to smoke your crop. Um, seen the last three years, I think has been excessive in the last three years. I hope that's not continuing on in the future. Maybe we're through, you know, a certain trend. Maybe we get through that, you know, but you look at the excessive heat and drought that you saw in California the last almost 10 years, you see this around the world. You know, I feel it in the crops, that, you know, that we manage across Western Canada. You get those two first weeks of July or even, you know, in 21, it started in the last two weeks of June. You know, what if you had something that isn't going to be, you know, isn't going to completely do away with that heat, but could you put something on your crop to give it the best potential to move through those hot days? And we have a product that has actually a patent that has effect on that, that we market worldwide as well. So, you know, we're, we're approaching that as, you know, try this on your canola first. That's the one that always seems to get those, uh, you know, that uh, uh, petal drop and pot abortion. You know, is there something that you could put on your crop to help you manage through that? You know, and we have part of that solution. Perfect. And I think, Ryan, I want to jump in here real quick. This is a good time to make a note that this is a three-part series. And we have two other segments that talk about plant hormones, what they are, how they work, and then talking specifically about crop stress as well. So I just wanted to jump in there for our audience that's listening. And they want a little bit deeper of a dive. Back to you. Yeah, exactly right. So just building on that heat one, it's called Excite. Um, we use this all the way across the world for very similar reasons in places that are hotter and wetter than our, our geography. You know, but if you want to give your crop, you know, best chance to fight through that heat for seven to 14 days, depending on how hot it gets, this is something that you can try. Um, yeah. And going forward, I'll go into another one, which is very, very interesting. If you're a potato grower, um, you're always trying to maximize your yield. You know, anything that you basically produce, you can probably get off to the processors. And in our country, processors are acting are asking for more and more production all the time. So far, all you can really do to keep maximizing production is getting more potatoes under pivots. <laughs> uh, we need a lot of water in there. But if you're if you're in an area where you're maxed out in the amount of uh, irrigation that you can actually put down. You know, as a grower, you probably want to try to optimize that yield as best you can. Um, 
one of our you know products I mentioned there earlier, Stimulate. Um, we have a protocol that if you apply that at tuber initiation and a few times after tuber initiation, um, we've seen anywhere from 10 to 12% ROI on your marketable yield to the uh, processor. So it's essentially making your marketable potatoes more of that fry size that you guys uh, get paid for, um, you know, optimizing that. You know, and we got four or five years data. Um, we're the only ones that are doing the research in terms of plant growth regulators on potato crops like that. So using hormones as a plant growth regulator. Uh, we use that as a plant growth promoter is what the word we say to it because we don't want your thing in as regulating down. We're actually optimizing its growth. You know, so again, another application you can use as a grower. Perfect. Okay. And then, you know, one that's coming down the pipe, which uh, we've been doing a lot of research on, um, and is probably going to come to the forefront more uh, in the next coming years, uh, we call the term nutrient use efficiency. But where I'm going with this one on is, you know, we all kind of got scared a little bit this past year when we heard from federal government that they're going to try to reduce, you know, fertilizer emissions coming out. I don't know what that's going to look like in the future. I hope it doesn't look like what I think it may look like, you know, if I fast forward five years down the road. But if we do get restricted on the amount of fertility we can put in our soil, how are you guys as growers going to keep optimizing your yields? How are you going to keep producing more and more if somebody caps the amount of fertility you can put in your ground? Um, we've done a pile of research around this around the world and being able to help you through that. Um, we're working on more of those uh, those protocols here in Canada for that that type of application, and you know using a few of our products as a way again just to stimulate that crop to get everything it possibly can and optimize itself. You know, so I use these words stimulate, but again, you know, a plant hormone is essentially a signaling mechanism, and if you tell that crop to keep growing instead of shutting down, it's going to again maximize its yield potential. So again. This is some other things we're working on. And these are the type of things that like, hey, maybe not everybody's seeing right now. You're mm-hmm. not feeling it, but that day may come when we have to reduce fertilizer. And how is that going to impact your bottom line as a farmer? How is that going to impact, you know, your revenue, your production? And, uh, you know, we're working on ideas to try try to solve that for you in advance. Nice. I'm glad you included that. There's a lot of farmers. The ones that are paying attention are going, uh, how's this going to work out, right? Well, yeah, like two and two equals four. Like, I don't know, for me, I don't know any farmers that waste fertilizer or they don't go intentionally trying to waste fertilizer. So I think they're doing as efficient a job as they possibly can currently. So if that all of a sudden gets restricted down, I think we can all do the math and what that's going to do in terms of production capacity. Um, So if we do have to reduce that down, how do you get, again, your maximum optimal, you know, output on your farm? And I don't think we've cracked that yet. Um, but this is the type of thing that we work on in other crops around the world. Uh, you know, we work on it on horticulture crops. That's where it really, really fits around the world. Uh, but we're trying to do that on broad acre, you know, commodity type crops right now that, you know, that we would primarily grow here in Western Canada. Excellent. Good. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a you few know, more? I know we got through quite, mm-hmm. quite a few there. Yeah, I'm I'm nothing if not brief, Tracy. Um, I love it. <laughs> most love people it. don't want to hear me uh, pontificate for too too long, but you know another one that we have, you know, it's kind of near and dear to our hearts. We got a we have a product called Sugar Mover. Um, this is essentially a product that you know does exactly what the name is sounds sounds like. You apply this at like say late uh, you know uh, late reproductive stage on your crop. What's essentially doing is trying to signal your crop to take the energy out of like say stock leaf stem and get it into its fruiting portion of its crop you know so what that means is you know if you apply this on a you know a canola plant at the right period of time what it's doing is it's telling the pods to get bigger and the kernels to get bigger so that essentially you're harvesting more yield again Um, same type of thing in potatoes it's telling you to say get that you know juice into that tuber to maximize its growth Um, you know the really nice thing that we've been working on this in the in the u.s and getting some good results on this say applying it to malt barley to increase your plump in your uh, mar- in your malt barley samples you know those are again again you know I was talking about niche applications of these products doesn't mean you put them everywhere all the time you know but if that's something that you're struggling with this is something that you can use to try to combat that particular issue on your farm you know so I'll go back on this you know increasing germination and soil salinity type of crop in t- in soil salinity type of areas reducing seed placed fungicides if that's what you want to do in your farm not recommending that but if that's something that's 
top of mind on and you want to try it, you know, we've got some applications on that. Uh, weather crop stress management, whether it be cold, whether it be wet, whether it be heat, you know, we've got some ideas for you there. And then optimizing uh, yields and tubers. Um, and then again, nutrient use, you know, nutrient use efficiency in the future. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. So we have the other two parts of this series, if farmers want to learn more. In addition to that, if farmers want more information, if they want to learn more, how can they do so? Yeah, check out our website. It's probably the first uh, step, and it's uh, called stolerenterprises.ca. So S-T-O-L-L-E-R, enterprises.ca. Um, check out our solutions page, and then uh, if you want to reach out, if you want to reach out to us, uh, just type in your name and number there, and we'll get back to you within a day. Fantastic! Thank you so much for your time, Ryan. I appreciate it. And right back at you. Thank you, thank you so much, and you in the audience. Thank you for tuning into this segment, and make sure to catch the other two, and we will link those in the show notes here as well. So I will catch you on the next segment. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm.